family is in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to Magnet Award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care. And home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think. Good evening. Welcome to Dr. Gore's show. Today we're going to talk about the most common complaints everybody has had in their lifetime. Headache and constipation. Not that directly we are combining them, but they are the two most common complaints one has had in their life, sometime or the other. And to talk about these two common issues, we have Dr. Purnima Gurg in the studio. Welcome to Dr. Gore's show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Dr. Gurk uh, started her training at um, Lady Harding in Delhi, and then she did her training in pediatrics at Molana Azar, and then she decided to come to United States and did her training at Bronx, Lebanon. And she's been in Bronx uh, Lady since then, and now she's associate professor at Albert Einstein Montefiore Hospital. So what's headache? You know, all of us have um, at some time in our life have had some pain in a scalp area and then we say oh I have a headache but what's the definition like how do we say this is a headache than just a stress so headache is a feeling it is it's a complaint which you say mm -hmm. my head hurts correct it's a pain in the head now how normally all of us get the headache mm -hmm. sometime or the other normally what we do we take the Tylenol we take the Advil and get relief of that. Correct. And it comes back, again we take this. The most important thing is, is this headache important or serious or is worrisome or not? Correct. Do we really need to consult the doctor? Mm -hmm. That is. The overall thing is, we should be looking into the causes. What made your headache on that day? Correct. Did mm -hmm. you sleep well the night before? Right. Did you miss your meal? Correct. Yeah. or was there is a lot of stress at work or you were running around with your kids the whole day and got so busy that you forgot to eat or you did not take the coffee which you are so used to taking it. Correct. So whenever the headache happens, you want to look back and say, what kind of triggered it? What made it? Did I forget something or did I overdo something? Right. And many times you do realize that yes, you didn't eat. And you eat, you take a Tylenol and the headache is over. Correct. But that doesn't happen all the time. So it is very important for us to know what are the different type of headaches are. Right. And the very common type of primary headaches we say, mm -hmm. they are like migraine headache. Correct. I think many of us must have heard about migraine. Right. Migraine headache runs in families, so people do hear this term, oh, so-and-so has migraine, my right. mom has migraine, my sister has migraine, and they suffer. So they know about it. So right. if we know a little bit about migraine, how to handle it, mm -hmm. I think we all can help to some extent. Right. And in the beginning, the migraine headache is a type of headache which comes in half of your head. Correct. But it is not necessary that you will get your headache in half of your head mm -hmm. or getting some kind of pre-symptoms, which Correct. we call aura. Right. Like you can't talk, uh, tolerate the light, you can't take the noise, mm -hmm. and you want to lie down, you can't even bend yourself. You just you want might have nausea. Right, right. you, you may feel like throwing up. throwing up. So that is usually the symptom. I mean, migraine can happen in a small child of six-year-old also. Wow. And they may just complain of pain, stomach start to throw up, and they just lie down in the bed. Usually in children, the migraine is less frequent. That is why it is usually not being diagnosed. Right, right. But as we grow older, especially the teenagers, mm -hmm. young adults, they get this migraine a lot. And the young girls. Absolutely. I was just about to say, I see in my practice, a lot of girls come at the time when they are supposed to get their period, right. they get this migraine attack. Like... Sometimes they diagnose as a PMS and or associated with the periods, and that's a cyclical uh, kind of nature right. of this pain. And many of them will tell you, yes, I'm going to get my headache because I'm going to start my period. Correct. Yes, and 
the second is pregnancy. Right. Many times this migraine comes in the pregnancy also. You must be having many patients coming mm -hmm. whose migraine headache gets little worse and is maybe little atypical mm -hmm. and sometimes it can predispose to little serious conditions also. Right. Like it, you may have to know, I hope this patient is not going into preeclampsia. Correct. So those are the conditions and migraine headache also if you if you know what triggered your migraine. Right. Sleep deprivation, right. keeping awake at night, or change in the in the work environment, or any stress. And the food. Sometimes we don't even realize what we ate. Right. Like certain foods definitely trigger migraine. Okay. Like cheese. Okay. Uh, all the processed cheese, chocolate, mm -hmm. nuts, and of course in adults the red wine is a big trigger. Right. So there are certain foods you can avoid. So if you know your trigger or you are out in the sun right. for a long time or very hot sun, humid environment. And you're dehydrated, you're yes. standing in the sun for a long time. It can sleep deprived as you rightly said. So these are the triggers. Once we identify I'm going to get my di migraine mm -hmm. if I do this. Mm -hmm. You know many of the food have got MSGs mm -hmm. and they are well known to trigger the migraine. So reading the ingredient, looking at this, what all it contains, I think is very important to help us not to get the migraine attack. So just going a little bit back, if somebody knows that they have migraines and you know these are all the, uh, the triggering factors that they should keep down, they have to keep a diary of stuff which makes it worse and if that happens then they know it's a migraine and then as soon as the headache starts they should take the medication, correct? Right. In the beginning you can always try the regular medications mm -hmm. like Advil. It works very well. Correct. Even you can combine Advil with Tylenol, it might work. Mm -hmm. And there is some over-the-counter medication like Exedrin. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are used to taking it right. and it works for migraine. Correct. So as long as they are working and you know it is coming and you take it right in the beginning of your start of headache or you're getting some symptoms and you take it and you avoid, you like, you start to eat if you have not mm -hmm. eaten, probably. But if you're throwing up, of course you may have to take a little bit more of medications or right. you have to go to the doctor. So that brings us to our next question that if you know that you have migraines and you know this worked before but now it's not working or they are coming more frequent, right? Maybe that's the time they should look into that maybe this is the time now to consult my physician because now it's associated with such a severe headache or now I can't see some, you know, I have some visual impairment or I have this severe headache associated with vomiting. I can't keep anything down. Um, so when do they consult physicians? As you rightly pointed out, these are the times you need to consult the doctor. If the, your headache is coming too frequently, mm -hmm. your headache is different from before, right. not getting better with the routine medications you were ready, or you have certain symptoms like you said, you cannot see or you feel that something is changing, your blurry eyes vision. And blurry vision is there, or you feel start to feel weakness in any part of the body. Right. These are the symptoms which should alert you. These are called red flags, means you should definitely make an appointment and see the neurologist. A neurologist will definitely go over all the things. It is not necessary mm -hmm. to have the imaging like the CT scan or the MRIs mm -hmm. because a neurologist is going to go over mm -hmm. in detail mm -hmm. about your history. Head history and actually will take all detail. Like it is not uncommon to see that you can hear somebody saying, oh, when my migraine comes for, for a second, I can't see. Correct. Or it's a temporary I, right, or I can't speak for a second, or I feel I cannot Think use my move hand. my hand. No, yeah, but this is, and then it everything goes away. So you, this kind of history, when you give to your doctor, will definitely know this is not something serious which is coming from your brain, right. or there is a something which need to be worked out with the special test like the CT or the MRI. Right, because ultimately it is the worry what we have is. Is there something growing in my brain? That Absolutely. Or we are missing something which can be very serious. So yes, so consulting the doctor is very important. And the second advantage is when your headache, migraine headache is really bad mm -hmm. and is coming too frequently, we do have medications which can prevent you from getting migraines called so, prophylactic medications. So there's two kind of treatment for migraines. 
um, one during the attack to make the attack either um, last for a shorter period and less intense mm -hmm. and then there's something else to prevent this attack right, from exactly. coming. So one has to know what diagnosis they have so that treatment is accordingly made to prevent this from coming. Right. So broad category have to, what are the medication during the attack that they can take and what are the preventive medication they have. So as we said, over the counter medication, mm -hmm. after that there are special medication called triptans. Mm -hmm. People might have heard of Amitrax. Right. I mean, there are many different type of that. Mm -hmm. You don't need to learn all the names, Correct. but these will be the special medication. And the, your doctor will tell you when to take it. Earlier you take it, like when you get the attack, it in the bun. Yes, right there and then. And since you can be in a state when you cannot take anything by mouth, you might be throwing up. Correct. Then there are alternatives. The same medicine comes as an injection form mm -hmm. and it comes as a nasal spray. So that is the advantage. That's a very good point you brought it up because if you don't take the medication right at time then or you take it too late and then you might start throwing up and then it might not have enough right. time for it to take action. Um, also caffeine is, is, is a good choice of medication it, like which is not a medication but something that people yeah. can take. I think there is a medication uh, Exedrine has a, a, a ca caffeine in it. Right. And that, and that tends to help some people. Right. And as we said if you know your trigger factor you know you're going to be up you know, you're traveling someplace or you have a big assignment, start taking the medication as soon as you feel. Yes. And what are the prophylactic medication we have? There is a different group of medications they use. Mm -hmm. One, we know them by the blood pressure medication, but they are like calcium channel blockers. Correct. They, they are, relax the muscles. They relax. They actually help in that, relaxing your muscles. Correct. So, because that is what you... In the migraine headache, you get the tight spasms, muscles, spasms in the, and it will relax. Correct. And the other main group which they use is, comes under a separate group called anticonvulsants. Okay. And the common name, if some, you have heard of is Depocrit. Correct. Is very commonly used. Even for headaches. Even for preventing the migraine Correct. headaches. Wow. So, um, so far we've learned that uh, people can get cyclical or triggered headaches, which are the migraines, and there's a treatment for pre preventing them. And when you have one, what to do? And the red flag, as we said, if the headaches don't go away or there's change in the severity associated with severe vomiting, which you never had that before, or neurological problem, which is not going up, it's not lasting for a few seconds. Now, apart from migraines, People do get sometimes what we call as tension headaches yes. or they have headaches in the temporal area. Uh, maybe sometimes it's their uh, eyeglasses numbers have changed and yes. that's giving them headache. So what are the other kinds of headaches? So the, as you mentioned, tension headache is mm -hmm. very common. Correct. But tension headache is different because it is like as if you have tied band. a band around your head. Right. It is all around your scalp. And then it goes down mm -hmm. into your neck and into your shoulder. Most of the time, it is the tightness in the muscles of your neck. Like and when you are goes, stressed, you, you are stressed. Kind of yes. So it is very much stress related. So tension headache is very stress related. If you do relaxing exercises, mm -hmm. you know how to relieve the stress. You do yoga and deep yeah, breathing. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Then it's going to go away. So that's that's stress headache. But the headache, which is sudden sharp headache, and associated with blurriness or if the headache is there with you falling down and then you get a headache, or um, you took some new medication and you get headache. I think those are the other red flags, correct? That you, if it's associated with a trauma or something, and if like, especially for the kids, right. when they fall down and after a while they complain of headache and throwing up, right. you worry for some intracerebral bleeds. Yes. So those are the headache, I, I really want to make sure people understand right. Those are not normal to have. If there's associated fall, please make sure you yes. take medical advice. Yes. Always headache with vomiting. Mm -hmm. If it is not like a migraine headache, Correct. it's concerning. Right. And that to not going away. I mean, headache, you, in children, of course, the fall thing 
it applies to adults also it right. applies to all the elderly, elderly people, people also because you may get a small bleed which may continue to go on so initially you never feel anything right. over a period of time you start to get the headache and if you have history of hypertension yes. then you are worried for those those headaches so those headaches really have to be and if you are pregnant as we um, touched it a little bit earlier uh, if you if your headache are there you have vision and your legs are swollen that might be sign of preeclampsia leading to eclampsia so please consult your physician maybe it's nothing or maybe it's something serious so do not take your headache very very lightly if as we discuss those red flags we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and talk more about constipation and um, the common complaints we'll be right back thank you When your family is in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to Magnet Award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care. And home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think. Welcome back to Dr. Gore's show. So we have Dr. Purnima Gurk uh, from uh, Montefiore Hospital, Albert Einstein College of Bronx, New York. You know, not every constipation we have to worry, correct? So how does, a, like if it happens once in a while, how we can prevent it? What are the home remedies that we do for constipation? Before we go over the remedies, I think it is important to see what causes this. Cause. Of course. So like if you have changed your diet, Correct. What you used to eat, now you are so busy, you are taking all the refined fast food, food, refined food, processed food, fast food, not eating any of the fiber, no vegetables, mm -hmm. you change your diet. Or you are not taking enough fluids, like what, not right. drinking water at all. Or you are kind of not able to sleep or take rest, or you are too stressed. All these things as we were talking in the headache, mm -hmm. works for the same as constipation. constipation. So. Really, we need to look into, are you taking some medications which might be contributing to this? Not only the prescription medication, just over-the-counter medication, which almost everybody takes, like vitamins. Correct. Like vitamins have calcium, mm -hmm. it has got iron, mm -hmm. which are highly constipating. Correct. If you have just started it, that might be the that reason. That might be the cause, right. correct. Of course, there are a lot of prescribed medications which mm -hmm. can cause um, constipation, but these are, we are going to talk separately, which you may need to discuss with your doctor. But just looking at what are the possible reasons. Mm -hmm. So once we identify, as you asked me, like what are the, how we can Correct, what are the home remedies, right. So if you have changed your diet, make sure you increase the fibers, make sure you add the fruits and right. vegetables. Right. There is, you need some roughage to have a nice soft bowel right. moment. Right. So that's one thing. If you started a new medication, maybe change it and maybe they might, we might be able to give you a different vitamins right. that might, you know, have some stool softeners or something different. So um, apart from those common causes, since we are talking causes, when do we have to worry that those might be the cause for the thing? So as you know, as we all know, if that constipation is alternating with diarrhea or you have increased weight gain along with constipation, you're feeling depressed, maybe thyroid, right? And right. this is affecting. So when do we get worried? So if you are constipated and you really felt that, yes, I know why I'm constipated. I tried to do something sure. and you change your diet, you change your style, lifestyle modification, you did everything and it doesn't get better. Right. And it's almost like two weeks. You took some laxative also, which are over the counter, right. like you added some bulk laxative, right. you took some softener, but still not working. Right. That is the time to go to your doctor and say, this is the problem. Right. Or your this came acutely and it's Correct. very bad, doesn't get better, that is a red flag. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of blood in the stool, normally okay. if you're constipated, you can have some, some blood. hemorrhoids and fissures, right. right, if it's a hard stool. Right, but not that blood, but more than that, if it is Correct. coming out, then you or have dark to, stools, correct? The yes, malaria. black stool is more important than yes, yeah, the internal fish. hemorrhage can be a sign of internal hemorrhage. So if yes. there's a black stool, we should right. be worried about. As you mentioned, changing of the 
Bowel stools, habits. Bowel habit. Like having constipation and then diarrhea. That is also a Correct. feature of underlying disease. Not only mm -hmm. cancer, but many of the other diseases we call inflammatory bowel disease can also Correct. be the cause. Many other diseases can like th thyroid you said. It's mm -hmm. very common. We don't even suspect because you might have put on weight, but you didn't bother. Correct. Like, but now constipation is causing and then you get your blood test done and you get to know that you are having thyroid, which is a Exactly. It's such a common problem right. sometimes. Also, um, a sudden change in bowel habits associated with increased abdominal girth, feeling, you know, sometimes losing weight along with that. Yes. We worried about ovarian cancer because a lot of time ovarian cancer can produce the same way because they have alternating, you know, diarrhea, constipation, maybe just constipation because tumor is, is pressing on it. And that's sometimes the, the complaints we get or like a lot of flatulence they mm -hmm. get right. and, and that's how we look for it. So as you rightly said, if it doesn't get better with your remedies and it's been two, three weeks and it's really bothering you, maybe it's time to talk with your doctor to look for underlying. And I will add like constipation when you start to throw up, you Correct. have to go to the emergency room. Right. If you, if you, exactly. If yes. you, the constipation is so bad, it's coming up. Yep. Maybe there's a, a spontaneous bowel perforations right. and there's some, some issue with your intestines and yeah. exactly there's twisting and turning, right. especially when people have hernia. Right. You know, a lot of times we've seen that, that the, the bowels get stuck okay. and then there's obstruction. Mm -hmm. So they can't pass anything yes. one way. So they have to pass it the other way. Mm -hmm. And so if it's fever with vomiting and you haven't passed no gas or bowels for a right. few days, I think is yeah. really, really high time Emergence. that you have to go through the emergency room so we've talked about the bad bad causes of uh, say constipation um, now when somebody comes to us how do we kind of evaluate these things do we um, do the regular blood test do we need to send them to GI like what makes us decide where do we traffic these people so there's simple blood test as for the thyroid mm -hmm. If you have some other disease like systemic disease, then you mm -hmm. are testing for that. Like somebody already known to have some autoimmune disease or right. you're testing for that. And sometimes you make a test of the stool if there's blood in it, which is not being seen. Like an occult blood. Occult blood. Right. And even making a rectal exam, which the Correct. doctor does in the office, is very helpful mm -hmm. to know if there are stools sitting there or not. Correct. And then moving into the, like, after you have made the, some blood test, you have done the physical exam, you do not feel anything in the belly, you are not having any stools in the rectum, mm -hmm. then you can do a x-ray of the abdomen, Correct. which is also a very simple test. You can do it and see, maybe there is a higher up, there is something impacted up. Right. That is not letting it go. And I, I've heard so many stories of young girls, um, you know, they had ha this issue, they didn't pass, they did the x-ray of the belly, they had like impacted stools and sometimes they needed enemas right. and, you know, bowel um, run through so the they valves will pass because all these young kids are on a strict diet, they, they just eat fibers, they just eat uh, no fibers just refined foods yeah. and they get so badly constipated and, and a lot of time there's a drug abuse which yes. can be associated, especially narcotics, narcotics. opioids are, are a really bad, um, you know, for your bowels because they reduce mm -hmm. the bowel activity. So all those combines, a lot of times we see patients in the ER right. with such an impact. So I think you brought up a very good point. Simple x-ray of the abdomen is going to rule it out. Any perforations, any yeah. gas under the diaphragm, and, and if there's obstructions, a, obstructions yeah. and like, you know, air fluid levels, mm -hmm. and if there's an impacted stool. So that's one of the ways we start looking into things. Yeah. And if this is not still not helping us mm -hmm. because patient is losing weight, mm -hmm. cannot eat anything, then we have to refer them to the gastroenterologist. Correct. Gastroenterologist normally does, um, there are different tests available, sure. which they do if um, they do colonoscopy. Correct. Colonoscopy is a test in which they pass a scope mm -hmm. from the rectum. Correct. And it is done under anesthesia. They prepare you. Mm -hmm. The bowels have to be prepared. They give you a certain medication, mm -hmm. which is basically to clean your bowels. So the day before, you take the liquid diet, mm -hmm. and then you take the preparation. The whole night, you make the number of PMs. In the morning, you are mm -hmm. clean. And then they put you to sleep. It's a very short anesthesia. And uh, they do the procedure. They go in from the rectum, mm -hmm. and they go all throughout your colon mm -hmm. till the small intestine where they join. 
So Correct. that means they get to see everything. The advantage of this test is that you are relaxed, your ball is relaxed, and they can manipulate it. They can look clearly. If they see something, they can take a biopsy. Correct. If they see a polyp, which is bad looking polyp mm -hmm. or a normal looking polyp, they take a biopsy and get the test. Correct. If they see mass, if they see ulcer, if they see something, they can. They might have answers. Right. So sometimes they might even do CAT scan, MRI before right. going maybe to colonoscopy and, and sigmoidoscopy, which should be part of your annual um, um, right. examination every 10 years or every five after years the after the age of 50, 50. they should do this. So yeah. it, it might be part that even if you don't have symptoms, sometimes your physician might refer it because that's part of the checkup. That's why we prevent colon cancer. Yes. Um, and I, I'm just bringing it up here again because we Indians think we don't eat so much meat, we are not at very high risk for colon cancer and they don't do it. And a lot of times people have had colon cancer, even vegetarians, and um, they've been missed because they thought their risk was not there. So yes. make sure when your physician um, tells you in your annual prophylactic, like we discussed prophylactic headache treatment, I think prophylactically to look at the, the colon when their time is right. To make sure if there's any cancerous process, you know, yeah. to look for things like that. As people age, and we have more of aging people, like mm -hmm. people are living longer, I think we have to be more careful because normally with aging, you tend to be constipated. Correct. That means you should be definitely changing your diet, doing some regular exercise so that you don't get constipated. In spite of that, you may still need to take sometimes laxatives, but mm -hmm. there are home remedies for that. Like you can take, uh, when you eat the cereal, add some fiber in it, like penny fiber is so Correct. common. You can add some bran, you can take some local isop we and call I, that. And I love um, the acidophilus, the, right. the, 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 there are different yogurt with live bacteria inside, right. which kind of keeps your, your bowel habits regular. Yes. One can do that. Even I think the old time things is to have like a warm glass of water, exactly. it stimulates this your bowel activity. The first thing in the morning when you have warm cup of tea or coffee or even just water kind of stimulates your bowels and that can trigger you. So those are the few things that one can try mm -hmm. about with the diet, the fluids, make sure um, you know you have either a yogurt or, or some fiber in your diet and to prevent this. And as you said, we, as we get older, we might need more and more of um, those home remedies. Right. But know when the symptoms are okay and when they are not. And if you have any of the things that we discussed, then maybe it's time to see the physician. Yes. Any last minute advice on either headache or constipation? Yeah, basically as we have already discussed mm -hmm. that you can take care of the both things mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. up to a certain extent. And it's always good to take a preventive measures so that you don't get to that stage that you have to take special medicine or consult your doctor. Correct. As long as you are taking the right diet, mm -hmm. you are sleeping well, mm -hmm. taking the worries out and doing some relaxing exercise, headache and constipation both can be taken care of. Such a nice word of uh, wisdom. So a few things, take home, make sure if the headache starts, start the treatment, try to change your lifestyle if you can, relax, get enough sleep, eat regularly, don't have, or keep yourself hungry. And uh, you can start taking pain medication, but if any of the red flags are there, see a doctor. Same thing for constipation, eat healthy, more fibers, more fruits, more vegetable, less of refined and fast food. Uh, increase uh, maybe yogurt with live bacteria in it, uh, add some fibers, uh, even bran, even um, oatmeal, you know, it, it makes nice bulk. Have some fluids. If it doesn't get better or if there are any of those red flags, see the doctor. I hope uh, this will um, kind of help you decide when to see a physician or not. If any of your friends would like to see this show again, it is on YouTube www.youtube.com and you can visit on Dr. Gore's show and you'll be able to see. Till next time, good night. When your family is in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to Magnet Award winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think.